Hello, good morning. Uh, today we're going to be going over the least common multiple problem over at Free Code Camp, the Intermediate Algorithm Scripting Challenge. Now for today we don't have um, a whole bunch of array methods and things to go over. What we do have though is we have a logic challenge. So what I did is I started off by setting up our logic for us and then I'm going to work through my solution, which isn't actually the best one, but it does work. So let me share my screen. And let's take a look over here. So we're looking at smallest common multiple or least common multiple, sometimes referred to as LCM in your math class. Um, so what that essentially means, you can always click on the provided link and it shows you what our least common multiple is, which is a smallest positive number that is a multiple of two or more numbers. So you essentially you're gonna be listing the multiples and then finding the one that is common between them just like this example here between three and five. And there you go. So this seems pretty easy with two numbers, right? But what we need to do is we need to do this with a range of numbers. So they're going to give us two numbers. And then we need to get the LCM of the entire range. So between one and five in this example, between five and one, which is the same one and five in this example, between one and 13 and 18 and 23. So the first thing I, want, I need to do is I need to create a sorted array of values. So I need an array from largest to smallest, all right? And I need to know what the largest and smallest numbers are, okay? Then I'm going to set or initialize a variable for least common multiple and a flag. Now a flag is just a simple Boolean variable that we're gonna use. So that way when we find the correct answer, we can throw the flag, essentially meaning changing it from uh, true to false or from false to true and then I'm going to iterate through starting at one or zero and I'm just going to keep adding one so I'm going to check all numbers for possible LCM or at least common multiple so I'm going to start with one then two then three then all the way up until I find the least common multiple now this is why I said this is not the best answer because we do get a warning that we have a possible infinite loop but since I know that there is going to be an LCM for all the numbers in the array. Um, at some point, we can get away with this uh, for now. But there is another answer if you go over to uh, Stack Overflow or you just Google it. There is another answer that you can find that works just as well. But I don't have a uh, firm uh, grasp on that uh, answer. So I just have the one that I came up with that I said is not quite the best. So I might come back and redo another video explaining the uh, other one as well. And then basically, if I find an LCM, which means it's going to be a value where all of the numbers in the array uh, divide evenly into it, then I'm just going to throw the flag, exit my loop, and return my LCM. So it seems pretty straightforward there. So let's follow that logic. So let's start by creating a sorted array of values. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my values here and what I want to do is I want to identify what the smallest number or the start value is, what the largest number or the end value is. Now I know there's only two values I'm given, but there might not necessarily be given in order. Plus it helps my logic later, you know, it streamlines my code a little bit. So I'm going to have a variable. I'm just going to call it my start for my start variable. And what I need this to do is I need it to be the smaller of these two numbers. And I've done this before with you uh, with the math uh, dot min, okay? And that's gonna take the minimum. Now, remember when we sort numbers, we run into the problem where it's really meant for a string. So if we have something like, um, so 23 and 180 instead of 18, it's still gonna think 23 is, um, it's going to be uh, smaller, rather. Anyway, um, that's not true. I said that backwards. If you have something where um, you have like 23 and 180, yeah, it's going to think 180 is going to be smaller. Yeah, I said that correct. Um, so I'm going to use math.min to guarantee I get the smallest number. And we have an array coming in as our argument. And an array only has two values, um, which is the first position and the second position, or the zero with position and the first position. So I want the math.minimum of ARR, you know, the very first thing, and then the second thing. So the math.min of that, 
All right, and now I could write var again and give myself a new variable, but instead of ending the sentence, I could just use, let's see, um, a comma. And if I paste it, and I don't want to start anymore, I want this to be end. And instead of math min, I want math max. So now I have a start value, I have an end value. Um, notice there's still a comma there. And I need a range to push this to, so a new array. So I can just say, I'll call it, let's call it range. Range equals an empty array. Now I can end my sentence of variables here. So there we go. So I don't have to write var three times. All right, so that seems pretty simple. So I have a start, I have an end. Next thing I want to do is I want to populate this empty array with values. So starting with the, the start number and ending with the end number, whatever that may be. And those are the variables I'm going to use to divide into the LCM to determine if we get a remainder or not. So let's do this here. Um, we're going to use a simple for loop. So for ri equal to, now instead of being equal to zero, I don't want to start my range array at zero. I actually want to start it with the start, which is why I called it start, it just makes sense. And keep going until i is uh, less than or equal to the end, right? So we have i would start less than or equal to the end. So now we're going to populate the array from the start to the end. And don't forget that i needs to be incremented each time. And all we need to do with these values is push. So range dot push i. <laughs> Remember, push is going to push that value to the end of the array. So it's going to start with the start, in this case, one, push, one. Then we're going to increment that again. And then i is going to equal now two. It's going to push the number two. Then we're going to increment it again. Now i is three. It's going to push three, so on and so forth, until we get to the end number. So if we want to see, we can return our range at this point. Let's see what we get. Good, we have a range of values from one to five, so we know that we are good there, and we're good to go. All right. So that is creating a sorted array of values. Done. Good. So what's next? I'm going to initialize an LCM and a flag that I can use later. So let's initialize this variable or set it to something. So I'll just, again, have another set of variables, right? And I could put this up here. It would be just fine. But just for my logic, it just helps out a little bit so we know how we're going. So I'm just going to call it LCM. I'm going to set it to 0. And so I have an LCM. And I just need a flag. So I'll just call it flag. And I'll set that to true, right? And that's going to automatically tell our program that true. So this is going to be a Boolean value, which is true or false. And again, I'm going to keep testing this LCM all right, against this entire array. So now I have an array of numbers to test my LCM against. All right? And then as soon as I realize that I've made it through the array and I have no remainders on any of my numbers, okay, that means I have an LCM. And so I need to take this LCM and I need to increment it and just test all the numbers from zero all the way up to, well, whatever, which is how we can have a possible infinite loop which would crash your browser. But since I know that all the numbers in the array, worst case scenario, you multiply them all together and you get an LCM, it might take a little while, but I know it will work. Like I said, it's not the best solution, but it is mine. Um, and there's a better one out there if you're interested in looking that up. So while flag, flag is true, so while true, okay? So this is where we're gonna get ourselves into a possible infinite loop here. Um, but we're not going to because my logic will be undeniable. Give myself some space, scoot this down. So while true, all I want to do is I wanna take my LCM and add to it. So it's starting at zero, right? So the first time we get into this while loop, it's going to equal one, okay? 
So once this equals one, remember we're going to read top to bottom here. I'm going to generate a for loop and that for loop is going to iterate through this array and divide that into the LCM. Okay. And then if all of these numbers divide nicely into the LCM, then we know that this LCM number, this current value for LCM is the real least common multiple. Okay, so that's all we have to do. So let's just go in and uh, let's do another for loop. And instead of i is already taken, so I'll just use var j. And var j is going to equal the start value. And since we have a range, I could iterate through the actual, in the actual spots of the array, but since we have a range of sequential numbers and I have the start value and I have the end value, I don't have to worry about saying ARR1, ARR2, so on and so forth. I could just go from the start to the end value, which makes uh, my code flow a lot better. So I can just use that stuff up there, which is why I did it that way. So var j equals start, j less than or equal to the end. Even though I'm not using actual array values, I'm actually using these same values that are in the array. So J plus. So now I have that nice range of values. Okay. There we go. So, so, so here we go. So I have a uh, range of values here. Um, originally, like I said, before I added this up here, I just was re reusing these over and over again. So I just created a start and an end. All right. Um, because I did that, I really don't think I need this for loops. I'm not really accessing this array, but I um, just kind of did it for il illustrative purposes here. So you can kind of envision what's going on. So let's just go through. So now I have an LCM that starts with one. And I'm going to take all of these values one by one and divide them into the LCM. All right. If e every single one of these values divides into the LCM evenly, okay, there will be no remainder. There will be no remainder. And remember the remainder operand that we can use. So right away we know that if if we're iterating through this uh, for loop, all right, and we do get a remainder, then the LCM is not valid. We have to increment it again and test another number for LCM. So how do I say that? Well, I can just say if the LCM has a remainder, all right, from wherever we are in this array, starting this case, one, two, three, four, five, if it has a remainder. So if the remainder equals zero, okay, all right, that would mean there was no remainder. But if there is a remainder, the remainder is not equal to zero. I am going to break. Okay. And what break is going to do is break is going to break me out of my for loop and increment my LCM. All right. So if the LCM was one, now it's going to be two. It's going to come down. It's going to test here in my for loop. And J, it's going to remember what J was. So it's going to add another one to J. Test again, test again from the start all the way to the end, okay? So we already know that that LCM didn't work. So then we're going to start at the start again and try to make it all the way to the end with all of those values with no remainder, all right? And if we do get a remainder, positive or negative, it doesn't matter, all right? If we do get a remainder, all right, we're just going to break out and test another LCM. That makes sense. Well, that's all good to go. Um, but if we do this, we will have an infinite loop. We need to have a, another victory condition here. So I'm just going to say else if else if we iterate through this entire loop without breaking, okay, which is the end. So if we get all the way to the end and we don't have a remainder on all of our values, we can declare victory. So how do we do that? So if I say that if J So if I make it through, so J, by the time J reaches the end, it's going to come in here and test if there's no remainder. So if there's still no remainder at the end, then, then we're going to come over to this else if 
and say, well, is J at the end? If it is at the end, we've successfully made it through our entire array. And then I could change my flag, set my flag to false. If once I set this flag to false, see the while loop then stops. Okay, so the while loop stops. And then what can I do? So this is the, this, this is here, this is the while. Okay, so right here I can just earn my LCM. All right, so now let me check my uh, syntax errors because I have a few syntax errors here. All right, so here's my syntax errors. Oh, if my LCM remainder J is not exactly equal to zero. That's what I forgot to put in there. Oops, there was my mistake. All right, so if this works, we're going to see we should have success, but I know we're not because I've tested this before I started. So we test the challenge, and look, we get everything's okay until we get down here. So what's going on with this value? Why is this not working? I'm going to control C, control V, and you're going to see what it's going to tell me. And I'll run this. Error, potential infinite loop at line 20. LCM plus plus, because this flag equals true, this could just go on forever and ever. So it wants me to write no protect at the top of my code because I happen to know. Hey. No protect at the top of my code. Um, just so it knows to run this in my browser and it's not going to crash it. Ah, storm that castle. Success. We have success. So as you can see here, um, we use some simple logic. I know I have an extra piece in there that I don't use, but that's okay. Um, it's just more for visual, uh, visualization of what we're actually doing. So we have a flag and we have an LCM. And all we did was set a flag to true, incremented this LCM, went from the start to the end value. Um, checked if we had a remainder with all of the values between the start and the end. And if we make it through from start all the way to the end without any remainders, check to make sure we're at the end, switch the flag, we've got our LCM. Okay? And remember, we have, we're have we going to be checking a lot of values starting at 1 and going all the way up to, in this case, what is this number here we had to check? We checked uh, six million over 6 million values. Um, we had to keep going through and breaking, break, 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 because it didn't work, didn't work, didn't work until we got to 6 million. So we went through this loop over 6 million times uh, in this current uh, value right here. Right? Is that 6 million or 600,000? No, 6 million times, just so you know. So there's got to be more efficient ways to do that. But um, this way works, and it works pretty quick because computers work pretty quick. So um, hopefully this was helpful, and hopefully you could visualize this pretty well. And I will see you next time.